Hey guys, Corey with Camel ADV. I'm going to do the install video on the uh, high exhaust kit for the Yamaha T7. Uh, installs fairly straightforward. Uh, you do need to cut the existing exhaust hanger. Um, so that is uh, the most technical part of the whole install. Depending on your mechanical abilities, you're looking at about an hour, uh, 90 minutes or so if you want to really take your time with it. Um, you will use a grinder with a zip disc on here, a hacksaw, reciprocating saw with a metal blade. Um, but yeah, very straightforward. Uh, definitely want to wear safety glasses uh, and or a face shield while you're cutting this. So this is what's included in the kit here. We've got the um, clamping bracket. We've got our cutting template. We've got our lobster back fabricated uh, link pipe. We've got our stainless steel muffler. We've got our graphite exhaust gasket, stainless steel bracket, some fasteners for the clamp our hanger clamp, a couple of springs. I'm going to need a few things to install this. Uh, ratchet, we've got a, an 8 mil Allen here, a 6 mil and a 3 mil, and a 14 mil socket. I've got a 3 8 and a quarter inch drive ratchet. Some locking pliers. You can use regular pliers here. They don't need to be locking. You need a silver or gold marker, or if you don't have that, you can do uh, masking tape with a black marker. Some copper coat. I recommend red Loctite and blue Loctite, and we've got some crazy glue here. Also, totally forgot about these. Uh, these are heat shields for our signal lights. So when we put the uh, high exhaust on, if you have a tail tidy, the exhaust is pretty much pointed right at one of the signal lights. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're not melting signal lights. So there's actually two here. So if you have a 10 mil uh, round style, you're going to use that heat shield. And if you're using the teardrop shaped ones, you're going to use this one. So before we can get anything installed, obviously we've got to take off the factory exhaust. So we've got a 6 mil Allen here and an 8 mil with a 14 mil bolt on the back. Or nut, I should say. ratchet with your 14 mil socket on the back to hold the nut. Then we've got a ratchet with our 8 mil Allen here. Take the nut off. Pull the bolt out. There's a washer here stuck to the rubber, so just make sure that that doesn't fall off because we will be reusing that. If the fastener's off, we can take the whole muffler off and set it aside. So this is our cutting jig here. It's very simple. This is on an angle. It's bent on an angle. It's checked on a template that we have, so every one of these is exactly the same. And you just slide it up your hanger here. Make sure that each of these legs is sitting flat on each of the tubes and just slide it to the point that it's staying on its own. Don't force it, don't bend it, don't anything. If you take this and you push it up higher, you're going to end up with a cut that's too short. So just take it, push it up, that's it. You don't need to get too crazy with it just as long as it's it's got enough force just to stay up on its own. Then we're going to take our silver marker or gold marker, something that you can see on the black tube, like that. And those are our cut lines. Now, cutting tubes like this um, and getting them square, getting the end perpendicular to the side, can be a little bit tricky. So we're going to take zip ties and put them around here. I'm going to put the zip tie just on the top line of where we drew with the marker. So as long as our cut is uh, below that zip tie, we know that we're in good shape. And that gives us a nice spot. Um, so it'll give us a nice square cut on the tube.
So now we've got them cut where we need. I'm just gonna take a file and I'm gonna clean up the edges a little bit. So this is a handy little deburr tool. Not a big deal if you don't have one. And you can take the sharp edge off the inside. If you don't have one of these, you can use oh, you can use a round file to clean those up. We've got our clamp bracket. Which drops in here like so. So that length is bang on the money as it should be with the cutting template. I was thinking we might have to take a little more material off here, but we don't. They actually look really good. So you can give these uh, a touch of, of touch-up paint so that they don't rust. Um, we're not gonna do it on the video here because we don't have time to let the paint dry, um, but we're just gonna move ahead and show you the rest of the install. So we're gonna take the chunk of uh, cut-off hanger here, stick it in the vise. So you can just take a flat blade screwdriver, pop that washer off. We've got the steel collared insert here. We need to pop that one out. No, oh, the rubber's gonna stick to it on this one. It's gonna be easier to get in the bike uh, if we get the rubber off of the collar, uh, but don't, don't destroy the rubber. Try to get it off of the collar. If it doesn't wanna go, then we can just work with it that way. But yeah, this one's gonna go. Depending on how many miles you have on your bike and how much mud and water and, and the stuff it's seen, uh, this will be easier or harder, just depending on your on the life your bike has had. So I just got the screwdriver in between here just to break any any kind of bond between the two. This one's been a little stubborn. So we're gonna take our hanger bracket, we're gonna take our rubber bushing, and there isn't a, isn't a forward or a back on this, it's just, uh, it doesn't matter which direction it goes in. And just squish it in. Again, you can use a flat blade screwdriver just to push it through, just be careful you don't uh, puncture the bushing when you do it. You can put a little bit of um, WD-40 or silicone spray on the uh, on the bushing to get it to slide in a little bit easier too if you like but that's it there and then we're going to take the metal sleeve and slide it back in and then that washer will go on the back side just like it did from the factory so we're going to take our three mil allen you actually don't even need a ratchet for this just the bit or an allen key or um, a T handle, whatever you have, whatever, whatever's handy. We're gonna take the set screws here, the grub screws, and we're just gonna start them in the outer plate. I'm gonna take red Loctite and just put a dab here. These will never come out, which is why I'm suggesting red Loctite on them. And then we're just gonna turn these in until a little dome piece on here is just protruding into the cutout, which will be about flush. So that's it there. So on the front one, the set screw is about flush and on the rear one, it's in about a millimeter, maybe a little bit less, but we've just got that dome sticking up. So when we clamp this on using the M8 bolts, when we clamp this thing together and it grabs the tubes from the factory hanger, um, if we try and put these set screws in after and tighten them to the point that they're gonna do anything, you, you just can't, these are three mil Allens and you'll just twist the Allen wrench off before you make any, um, any headway on that. So we're gonna put them in first, and then we're gonna use the three uh, M8 bolts here to suck this whole thing together, and that'll put a dimple in the tube using the set screws. 
Uh, those M8s are going to get blue Loctite because you want to be able to take them out without too much drama later. So we're going to take all three of the M8 bolts and we're going to get Loctite on them. If you have an adventure bike, you should absolutely have medium strength Loctite in a decent sized bottle. Basically anything that comes off your bike should go back on with blue Loctite. So we're going to take our clamp and we're going to slide it over and we're going to set the front piece on over top and then we're just going to reach around from the back and get the middle bolt started. And it won't fall off now. So we're just going to take some of the, take some of the slack out here with the center bolt. Just get it started so it's snug just by hand. And then get the other two in. And then we're just going to go from the inside. Give this one a little better than a quarter turn. A little bit. We're going to take our graphite seal, we're going to slide it on the header tube first. Then we're going to take our stainless steel uh, link pipe bracket. An exhaust is a really tough place for anything to live. You have heat and on a motorcycle you have mud and water and everything else. When we add, when we add those things together it's very easy to uh, have bolts totally seize. So we're going to put some anti-seizer copper coat on the clamp bolt just to make sure that we can get everything off later. I'm going to slide it over top of the link tube, or link pipe I should say. And we're going to slide this onto the seal. So just be careful when you're putting this on. The metal is sharp and you kind of shave the seal as it goes on. And once, once you slide it on, then the, uh, the seal is stuck in the pipe. If you put the seal in the pipe first and then try to slide it on, there's a good chance you'll push the seal in too deep. So we're just going to leave this loose right now. We're going to get our muffler on here. So we've got our muffler. I'm going to slide it onto the end of the link pipe. Like so. And we've got our band clamp. We're going to take the factory bolt. This collar that's on here is going to come off though. So we've got the factory bolt through that clamp. We've got our washer from the back side. And then we're going to take the factory nuts. I'm just going to get that started so nothing goes anywhere. We've got a little bit of wiggle here. I'm going to make sure we get the link pipe in the right spot. So put our springs on. You don't need to use vice grips. You can just use regular pliers if you need or if you have. We're going to come up to the top here now and we're going to tighten that bolt.
And because we've got that collar going through there, uh, you basically can't over tighten that bolt. The sleeve on the collar bottoms out on the washer and keeps it from over tightening. You're not gonna crush the, uh, the rubber bushing when you do that. So we're gonna line up the edge of this clamp just with the edge of that groove and tighten it. So I'm gonna make sure we don't over tighten that. It's not really a torque thing. It's just, uh, you can potentially crush that graphite um, uh, seal if you over tighten it. So we just want this tight enough that it's really kind of difficult to turn this link pipe, if at all. So if you've got a tail tidy, whether it's ours or somebody else's, you'll run into an issue where the exhaust is blasting directly on the signal light, which is less than ideal. Um, so we've got the heat shields here and the one for the teardrop is actually angled for the direction of blast on the exhaust. So we've got a cut here and the reason for that is when you have your uh, light already installed, if we didn't add the cut here, you would have to disassemble the entire back of your bike to be able to pull the wire through um, to feed it through here. It isn't as strong because it's cut, uh, but it saves you tearing. It's probably half hour, 45 minutes um, of tearing things apart on your bike. So you can just give that a little push to the side, slide that like that. For the uh, purposes of demonstration here, I'm gonna pull this over here to do it. You can give these a little blast of WD-40 or soapy water. Um, we're trying to get, it is a little bit of a battle to do this. We wanna get the ring, the rubber ring here through the uh, heat shield collar, like so. And you're gonna bend it a little bit doing it. It's not the end of the world. And of course you're gonna do that with your signal light dangling off the bike. And then you're going to reinstall your signal light into uh, the tail tidy, which is a bit of a pain in the ass to do this because this isn't actually attached to anything. So that's it fitted here. And you can see the flat part here is the, uh, the flow of the exhaust. The signal light is flat and that's the angle on the back of the subframe in the exhaust coming up. So if you're using round signal lights, it's the same thing. The only difference is we don't have the teardrop to orient it, orientate it um, this way. So you may, totally up to you, want to put uh, a dab of crazy glue on here before you put the signal light on. You get the angle set, you tighten it, and then this is gonna sit in the same spot. It's not going to um, start to rotate down over time. That wraps up the install for the Camel ADV high exhaust kit on the Yamaha T7. If you'd like more information about the kit, you can check out our website, camel-adv.com. Thanks for watching.